Hello everyone, my name is Ashkan Negaban, and in this video I'm going to talk about simulation input analysis using Historia, which is a new tool that allows us to um, identify and model non-stationary arrival processes. So as for the objectives for this video, um, we're going to talk about, uh, very briefly, um, about basics of input analysis. And then um, we will discuss how we can identify and model non-stationary stochastic processes uh, using an example of uh, a set of data that have been collected from a, um, a restaurant. And then finally, we will discuss how we can use um, Historia, histograms and rates for input analysis, as a tool to um, identify and model non-stationary arrival processes. So let's talk about the basic steps in input analysis. So the first step is, of course, data collection. The second step is um, IID assessment, where we determine that the data are independently and identically distributed. The third step involves hypothesizing about uh, the uh, distribution families, potential distribution families for uh, the collected data. And uh, the fourth step involves estimating distribution parameters. And finally, we will use statistical goodness of fit tests to um, assess the fit of the hypothesized distributions to, um, to the data. In this video, we mainly cover the second and third steps in input analysis, which is IID assessment and hypothesizing potential distribution families. And before we continue with uh, the problem description, um, I'd like to mention that the main reason for assessing the data being IID is that all of the proceeding steps, meaning steps three through five, are all based on the assumption uh, that data is independently and identically distributed. So for example, if you use a software package, uh, a statistical software package to perform a uh, goodness of fit test on a set of data points, the main assumption of the statistical test is that the data is IID. So if you skip step two or fail to establish uh, the IID assumption, basically the rest of your analysis will be incorrect. So now let's get to the description of the, uh, the restaurant that we're considering in this video. So the restaurant, as you can see in the picture, uh, consists of a dining area. So uh, when customers arrive, they first wait to be seated. So if a table is available, they, um, they are seated right away. Otherwise, if all of the tables are occupied, the customers wait for a table to become available. After the customers are seated, um, a wait person takes the uh, order and takes it to the kitchen. Once the order is ready, uh, a wait person, which does not have to be the same person who took the original order, takes the order to um, or takes the food to the customers, and um, the customers eat. Uh, when they are done, they uh, go to the cashier. If there is a line, they wait in the queue. Otherwise, they go and make the payment, and then they leave the restaurant. So the manager of this restaurant is. Uh, has several concerns, which are customer waiting times for tables and the time that customers spend uh, for the wait person overall and time waiting for the cashier uh, at the cash register and the cost of staff. And uh, basically, they're, they are trying to make uh, decisions about uh, the number of tables and also staffing de uh, decisions including the number of wait people, cashiers, and um, other types of staff in the restaurant. Again, um, since our focus in this video is not on developing the model and doing simulation analysis, I'm not going to go over the uh, details of uh, the operation of this restaurant. You guys can read the descriptions and learn exactly how the restaurant works. But um, the only part that uh, we care about is that the, the, the restaurant is open between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m., basically lunch and dinner. 
So now we get to the part that is uh, relevant to this video. Suppose that your firm had hired an IE intern uh, to collect the data from this restaurant. So your intern has collected data over a 25 day period and the data that your intern has collected uh, includes arrival times of customers, uh, time for customers to order, time uh, for customers orders to be cooked, time for the customers orders of food to be uh, delivered uh, to the table, uh, time for customers to eat, time for tables to be bussed, and time for um, customers to pay. Uh, the recorded times do not include any wait time and finally the intern has uh, uh, put all of the data in, uh, in an Excel file. So let's take a look at the data that uh, have been collected. So um, in this Excel file that your intern has prepared you will see that we have several sheets and um, for example this first sheet includes the arrival times of customers in minutes so for example this 4.54 shows the arrival time in minutes of the first customer um, on the first day of data collection and similarly the second number is the arrival time of the second customer in minutes on the first day of um, data collection so uh, we have a whole bunch of data that have been collected during the 25 day uh, period of data collection and what we're interested in is to um, analyze this data in order to be able to develop an input model for the arrival process that we will be using in the simulation model of this restaurant. You can also see that we have data for uh, taking the order, uh, for the order to be prepared, delivery time from kitchen to uh, table, customers eating time, uh, time to bust the tables, time to make the payment, and we'll get to the last sheet uh, later on. So let's, let's see how we can analyze this arrival data in order to find the parameters of our uh, arrival process that we will be using in our simulation model of this restaurant. Now assuming that the arrival uh, rate of customers into this restaurant is constant during the day. In other words, there will be no lunch rush or dinner rush. And in this case, it makes our analysis uh, very simple since we can um, easily find the um, average arrival rate and use it in our simulation model to make our staffing decisions. So in the last sheet of uh, uh, this Excel file, uh, we, ha we are given the inter-arrival times. Um, so the inter-arrival time of the first customer in the first day is simply the same value, 4.54 minutes, because we assume that we start uh, data collection at time zero, which is basically uh, 10 a.m. And our first customer arrives at 4.54. So this value is going to be equal to the arrival time of the first customer. However, the second customer arrives at um, 7.59, which makes the inter-arrival time um, 3.05, which is the difference of the arrival time of the second customer and the arrival time of the first customer. Using the same logic, uh, the inter-arrival time for all of the arrivals are calculated in this uh, worksheet. And we can go ahead and um, calculate the uh, average inter-arrival time in order to get the average arrival rate. So I'm just uh, going to calculate the average uh, inter-arrival time, which is simply going to be um, the average of my data. Uh, let me make sure that I get all of them. Day 25. And this value here will give me the average inter-arrival time. So 
uh, I expect a new customer to arrive every 2.09 minutes on average uh, during the day. Now the problem with uh, using this average inter-arrival time in order to make staffing decisions is that we tend to um, overstaff our restaurant during the hours that the arrival process is slow, for example early in the day or uh, between the rush lunch and dinner rush or after the dinner rush later in the evening. Since in those uh, time periods we expect the arrival process to be slower than this average value. On the other hand, during lunch rush and dinner rush, our arrival process can be much faster, arrival rate can be much higher than this average value, so um, our restaurant will probably be understaffed if we simply use this average inter-arrival time. So it is really important for us to understand how the arrival rate and the arrival process changes um, over time so we can adjust our uh, staffing needs accordingly. Alright, so now let's take a look at uh, the, some of the tools that we can use to um, identify this non-stationary non behavior in our um, arrival process. So the first tool that we're going to talk about is the tool, uh, a type of graph that basically uh, plots the proportion of um, arrivals that happen up until a certain time. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going to go back to my uh, actual arrival time data and I'm going to uh, find the frequency of um, arrivals that occurred in certain periods of time. So for, for now I'm going to uh, consider two hour intervals. In other words, I want to see whether my arrival rate changes in two hour periods. So what I'm going to do first is to specify my time blocks which is going to be um, of size two hours. My first time block will be uh, from 0 to um, 120 minutes, that's 2 hours. My second time block will be from 120 minutes to 240 uh, minutes. And I'm going to continue uh, specifying my time blocks uh, until 720 minutes. So I'm going to end up with 6 um, time blocks here. Now remember that our restaurant uh, operates from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., uh, which means we're going to have um, 12 hours of operation. So if we consider two-hour time blocks, we're going to have six time intervals. Now the next step is to find the f frequency of uh, arrivals in each of these time blocks. So in order to do that, I'm going to use uh, the frequency of uh, function in Excel and since it's an array function I need to select all of my cells and then I'm going to type in frequency uh, my ar array my data array is going to be let me make sure that I get all of my data here so here is my data array and the next um, input into the frequency function is the bins array, which I have specified right here. So now um, I have the uh, expression for my frequency uh, function, and I um, need to make sure that I hold down Control Shift and then press Enter, so that um, Excel automatically calculates the frequency of um, occurrences in each of the intervals. Here, I'm just going to uh, find the sum of mm, my uh, frequencies. So it's going to be the sum of these values right here. Next, since I'm interested in finding the proportion of occur occurrences up until a certain time, 
or up until the boundary of each of these time blocks, I'm going to um, accumulate my frequencies. So the first one is simply going to be equal to my first uh, value, um, and the second one is going to be equal to my first accumulated value plus my second frequency. And similarly, I can find the the cumulative frequencies for my time intervals. And again, uh, just make sure that the, the two values uh, match together. Now since we're interested in the uh, proportion, we're, si we're simply going to uh, divide this column by the total number of observations or the sum value that we have calculated here. So simply I'm just going to divide uh, each of the values in this column by my sum. So now this one shows that all of my observations happened before 720 minutes. So the first plot that we're going to uh, um, use to find non-stationarity non in our data uh, plots the, these values versus our uh, time blocks. So in order to do that, I'm simply going to select these values right here, go to insert, um, and I need a line chart. So this line chart right here shows me how the uh, arrival rate changes uh, between my two-hour time blocks. So, uh, so it, the first uh, up until the end of the first time block, 15 percent, al almost 15 percent of my observations occur, and um, if uh, the arrival rate remains constant, we would expect the slope of this line to remain constant um, until the last. Uh, time block. However, when we look at this plot, we'll see that the arrival rate changes between our time blocks. So, for example, in the last two-hour block, we see that the slope is uh, different from the four hours before it. So, what we conclude here is that during these four hours, uh, the arrival rate remained constant while it decreased a little bit uh, in the last uh, two hours of uh, the operation of the restaurant. However, the important question is whether this uh, change in the slope of the line is due to the randomness or does it actually represent a change in the arrival rate. The other question that uh, we really need to answer is whether um, using two-hour time blocks is accurate enough for the sake of our uh, analysis. So, for example, if we use this plot to model our arrival data, we are going to consider a constant arrival rate during our last two hours of operation. However, it is possible that uh, the arrival rate is different in the last hour of operation from the penultimate uh, hour of operation, but our model doesn't account for that. So if we can adjust our staffing levels every hour, then we would probably like to have a more accurate input model that uh, represents how the arrival rate changes hourly rather than, that, rather than in two-hour time blocks. So the next thing I'm going to do here is to basically repeat the same process, but this time for one hour time blocks. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm simply going to, let me do it uh, right beside um, the current plot. So what I'm going to do, this time I'm going to have uh, one hour time blocks. So my first time block is going to be 60 minutes, so from 0 to 60, and then 120, and what I'm going to do is to continue until 720 minutes. 
and the next thing I'm going to do again is to uh, find my uh, frequencies. So frequency of my observations. Let me select my data right here. All right. And of course, I need to go back and um, specify my bins. I moved too much to the right. So here are my bins. And again, make sure you hold down um, Control and Shift keys and then press Enter. And it seems that I'm missing a parenthesis because I added an unnecessary parenthesis here. So Control Shift, Enter, and I get uh, the frequencies per hour. Now, again, I'm going to calculate the sum so that I can verify my proportions uh, later. So this is simply going to be the sum of the values in this column. And I'm getting the exact same value as I got uh, uh, for the two hour time blocks as we expected. So in the next step I'm simply going to find the cumulative uh, uh, frequencies so my first value is going to be equal to the first uh, frequency. However, the second one is going to be accumulated. So it's going to be the second frequency plus the first one. And if I apply this to all my um, time intervals, again, for verification purposes, um, I should see the exact same values here. <coughs> And finally, in order to find the proportions, we simply divide uh, the values in this column by the total uh, number of observations. And this time we have the proportion of arrivals per hour. So now I'm going to uh, plot my graph here, line chart, and here it is. Let me put these side by side so we can compare them together. And this time when we look at our uh, line chart, it seems that we have identified a non-stationary behavior here that we could, couldn't identify using the two-hour time blocks. So in the two-hour time blocks, when we looked at this plot, we assumed we would have assumed that the arrival is constant between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. However, uh, when we look at our new plot that is representing our, the change in our arrival rate per hour, we see that from 4 p.m. to uh, basically 8 p.m., we have this non-stationary behavior or change in the arrival rate in our um, arrival process. Now, again, the important question that we need to ask ourselves is, do we need to repeat the same analysis for smaller time blocks, let's say 30-minute uh, intervals, or not? And the answer to this question really depends on two things. First, uh, it really depends on how accurate we want our input model to be. So if the arrival rate turns out to change every 30 minutes, then does it really matter if we identify that and then use it in our simulation model? In other words, does it really change our decision about our staffing needs? Uh, the second question is whether it's practically possible to change our staffing level every 30 minutes. But again, the general process is to basically repeat the same um, type of analysis on our data and plotting the, the line chart that represents the changes in our uh, arrival rate. Also note that this plot does not give us any information about 
the underlying distribution of the arrival process in each of the time blocks. In other words, although we have identified that the arrival rate is constant, for example, in the first two hours, this plot does not give us any information uh, as to whether the distribution also remains the same. So it is possible that the distribution of the arrival, arrival process changes while the rate remains constant, uh, but we, not, we do not um, identify this kind of behavior from uh, our plots here. And in order to uh, determine a change in the underlying distribution in the arrival process, what we really need to do is to develop the histogram of the data in each of the time intervals and then compare the general structure of the histogram that represent or approximate the shape of the underlying distribution with one another. And as you can see, this process can get very tedious since First of all, you need to play with different uh, sizes of uh, time block. And also, you, for each of your time blocks, you need to uh, manually create the histogram and uh, compare them together, which can take a long time and put a lot of burden on the modeler. So the difficulty of doing uh, this trial and error process really motivated us to develop a tool that not only automates uh, the uh, uh, analysis process, uh, which uh, significantly reduces the burden on the modeler and, and um, saves the modeler a lot of time, uh, but also provides a chart that not only gives us information about uh, the behavior uh, in, ter in terms of the arrival rate, but also gives us information uh, about the uh, underlying distribution of the arrival process in each of the uh, time intervals. And the tool that we have developed, and I'm going to show you how to use it in this video, is called Historia. The Historia uh, was first introduced in um, a paper that is published in the Proceedings of the 2014 Winter Simulation Conference. Uh, the tool is developed by Ansari, Negabon, Megahead, and Smith. And uh, the paper is available for free in the archive of the Winter Simulation Conference website. So as you can see, uh, the title of the paper is Historia, a new tool for simulation input analysis. Um, Historia stands for histograms and rates for um, input analysis. And in the paper, you, can, uh, you will find more information about the need for this tool and uh, the deficiencies and uh, drawbacks of the traditional methods that we use to identify and model non-stationary arrival processes. And then uh, the paper talks about how the Historia chart basically uh, gives you several kinds of information all in one place. Uh, there is also a link to the tool that uh, is available for free. So you guys can click on this link and download the, the Excel VBA based tool on your computer. And um, uh, if you have a Microsoft Office 2013, then you should be able to use the tool uh, without any problem. But it may not work on uh, uh, older versions of, um, of Excel. Uh, there are also uh, information about uh, how the tool works, the logic of the tool, and how the user can use the, uh, the tool and generate the Historia chart. So let's get back to our, to our data and see how we can use uh, this tool to uh, identify uh, non-stationarity in our data. So if you open up uh, Historia, this is what you see. So we have uh, a few columns here uh, that we can use depending on the format of the data that we have. And um, a nice feature of the Historia tool is that it also allows us to uh, collect data in the right format that can be used by the tool. So um, you can simply collect uh, data on different observations by clicking on, um, on this button, collect data, right here. So let's say I'm collecting data on um, the arrivals into a restaurant, and whenever a customer arrives, 
I just click this button and the tool automatically saves uh, or records the timestamp uh, that uh, the event happened. So uh, this arrival occurred at uh, 2.47 p.m. and uh, as you can see it whenever the next arrival happens you can simply click uh, on this button again and then the tool records the next arrival which uh, happened say at 2.48 p.m. So uh, that's, uh, that's a nice feature of uh, Historia that uh, uh, we think complements uh, the, other, the other functionalities uh, of the tool which is mainly identifying non-stationarity in our data. Now let's take a look at how we can use Historia to analyze our data. As you can see, you can input your data in two different formats in the tool. So uh, if you have collected the data uh, in the timestamp format, you use this column. Or if you have the inter-arrival time data, then you simply copy your data uh, in this column, but you also need to specify the day number associated with each data point. So let me go back to our data and I'm going to use the inter-arrival times uh, data. So what I'm going to do is to copy uh, the inter-arrival times that have been collected on the first day into uh, the second column in uh, the Historia tool. I'm going to copy the values and I'm also going to uh, specify the day number which is 1 uh, for the first day. So all of these data points are collected um, on the first day of data collection. The next thing I need to do is to uh, copy the data from the second day of data collection in the tool. So I'm going to copy the values and again I need to specify the day number which is 2 for, for um, all of these data points. And here we go. So I'm going to continue uh, to uh, move my data and copy it to, to the tool so that I can uh, then use the tool for analysis. So I have input all of the data in Historia. So I can see I have the data uh, from 25 days in the tool. And um, what I'm going to do next is to mm, use Historia to analyze the data. So before we can uh, create the Historia chart, the first thing we need to do is to uh, convert the data into timestamps since we're using the inter-arrival time format. So I'm simply going to click on timestamp time stamp converter and the start day is one that's uh, the first day of uh, data collection. And you can also um, assign the, the month value to it. So let's say we have collected this data uh, in February 2014. So I'm going to select two for the month. And the study range uh, consists of 12 hours from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And I'm going to set the uh, start time to uh, 10. So when I click on convert, Historia is going to automatically convert my inter-arrival times into the actual arrival times in the timestamp format. So as you can see, my first uh, arrival on the first day occur uh, occurs at 10, 4 a.m. And uh, similarly, you can see when the other, uh, the, the other arrivals um, 
happened. So now that we have our data uh, converted into the timestamp format, we can simply click on the Plot Historia button and then um, we need to specify uh, some values in order to create our Historia chart. So the first value that we need to specify is the size of our time block. Similar to the initial analysis that we did using uh, the line chart, I'm going to use uh, two hour time blocks first. So I'm going to set my time block size to 120 minutes. Uh, the interarrival bin size is basically used to create the histogram of interarrival times in each of your time blocks. So um, for the sake of this uh, example, I'm going to use uh, half a minute time intervals to uh, create the histograms. And uh, the hours studied per day is 12 hours, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And I have 25 days of uh, collected data. So simply going to say plot and the Historia tool will automatically uh, create the hist histograms and uh, also creates a bar chart that shows how the rate changes over time. As you can see, uh, the bar chart shows uh, the arrival rate in each of your two-hour time blocks. And also, you can see the uh, distribution of the arrival time or inter-arrival times in each of your time blocks. So this will allow you to uh, hypothesize the distribution in each of your two-hour time blocks. And when I look at these uh, histograms, my hypothesis would be um, an exponential distribution, except for uh, this third uh, time block where either I don't have enough observations to make a um, educate, educated guess about the distribution or uh, I'm over aggregating non-identically distributed uh, data that results in uh, a shape that is not really informative. Now suppose that we want to do the same analysis but this time we want to change our time blocks uh, to one hour. So I can simply go back to data and this time I'm going to first clear the Historia chart and the tool is going to ask you, you can't undo deleting sheets. Um, so you say delete anyway and uh, this time I'm going to plot the Historia plot but using one hour time intervals. I'm going to uh, keep the bin size at uh, half a minute and the rest of the uh, uh, values won't change. So I'm going to say plot and the tool automatically uh, does the analysis and now we have a Historia chart that shows me how the rate changes uh, per hour and also gives me the histogram of uh, the hourly arrival process uh, in each of my time blocks. So again, you can look at these histograms and um, hypothesize about the underlying distribution um, in each of your time blocks. So as you can see, the tool makes it really easy and fast to do trial and error with your data and try different time blocks. And also, it provides information about the underlying distribution of the arrival process in each of your time blocks, which allows you to uh, determine whether the distribution family changes from interval to interval or not. And once again, if you don't get a nice smooth shape for your histogram, there are really only two possibilities. Uh, either you don't have identically distributed uh, data in the time block and when you aggregate uh, uh, the data you do not get a nice shape or uh, it's simply caused by uh, having not enough number of observations to get a nice histogram and uh, in this case when you look at the historia chart you'll see that for the for the time blocks where we have 
relatively slow arrivals, uh, we do not have enough observations to, uh, to construct uh, a nice histogram that allows us to hypothesize the underlying distribution. Now that we have learned how to use the Historia tool to identify and characterize non-stationary arrival processes, let's uh, compare our results with uh, the original input model that we used to generate the data for this example. So here is a plot that shows you how we generate the data. So we have an arrival rate of 15 per hour in the first hour, an arrival rate of 40 per hour in the second hour, and so forth. And you can see that uh, if I can put these side by side together, and let me um, zoom out here a little bit, uh, you can see that our Historia plot uh, was able to capture the behavior of our arrival process. So um, our estimate of the arrival rate in the first hour would be 15.3, while uh, in the original model, we used uh, an arrival rate of 15 to uh, generate the data. And the minute differences that you, uh, uh, that you will see are mostly due to randomness. Also, as for the underlying distribution of the arrival process, uh, uh, when you look at uh, the histograms, at least for the ones where we have enough observations to make an educa educated guess uh, about the underlying distribution, we would hypothesize um, an exponential distribution for, um, for those uh, time blocks, which is in fact the distribution that we use to generate the data. So in this video, we uh, talked about the basic steps of input analysis of uh, non-stationary processes, and we introduced Historia as a tool that automates the process and provides a chart that gives us uh, different sorts of information about uh, the behavior of the stochastic process by uh, characterizing changes in the rate and in uh, the underlying distribution of the stochastic process over time.